Greetings. My name is Guy Dornsey. This is the show Change the World, where I like to invite guests on who are working from a positive vision of what the future can be and working with big ideas and big themes as to how we make a better future instead of just moaning and groaning and complaining, which never gets us anywhere, quite frankly, and we all know that. Today, my guest is Terry Dance Benink, who is a retired vice president of academics at an Ontario College, cares deeply about environmental justice and indigenous rights. A woman of faith, member of Esquimalt United um, Church, and a breast cancer survivor. And for the purpose of our interview now, you're chair of Fair Vote Canada, BC, and a member of our provincial Make Every Vote Count Alliance, determined to help win the vote in the referendum for more proportional voting. So we're going to spend the time talking about proportional voting. But before we get into that, yeah. how did you get into proportional voting? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think uh, my environmental passion is really what kind of moved me into it because after seeing what has happened to uh, issues like Kinder Morgan or Enbridge, um, it just became very clear that unless we have a change in our voting system, yes. you're, we're stuck with a system where one party yes. with a minority of the popular vote can make all the decisions. Right. And so, frankly, I started getting tired, tired of the one-off, one-off, yes. one-off battles and started to question, wait a minute, there's something deeper here, something systemic yes. that we need to address that affects all issues. When did BC last have a true majority government, when more than 50% of the people supported the winning party? All I know is it's been 1953, we've had 17 elections. One has been a genuine majority. Ah, so that's 60, One. 70 years where every government has only been supported by a minority of the people. Exactly. NDP, Liberal, yeah. doesn't matter. But I mean, that's pretty shocking. Yeah. And so that system is called first past the post. Yes. And it's, it, it, it's, it's yeah. blessing is that it's really easy. Yeah. yeah. You all just race and whoever gets the most votes wins. Exactly. Even 15th if that's... 15th century model. A 15th century 15th model. 15th century is when it was introduced. Right. So I think it's time to... Yes. Modernize. And I suppose in a very simple society, if you just got two forces competing, then the, first, the one who wins, wins. But if you've got a variety exactly. of thoughts and feelings and interests in a big province. Exactly. So what are the main alternatives to first past the votes? What are other countries doing as a different way of voting? Which are the most successful? Yeah. There's about 90 countries in the world, all of Europe, all of South America, that are using proportional voting. So yes. Canada and the UK and the US are kind of anomalies. We've right. kind of hung on to our old uh, traditions. And um, what we found, Fair Voting uh, Canada, BC, what we found in our research is that the countries that have moved to proportional systems, and there's many forms yes. of them, are that they're more stable in yes. the sense of there's less policy lurches. The politicians actually have to share power yes. and cooperate. Um, women do better. Voter turnout goes yeah. up. Environmentally, they've scored higher on the Environmental yes. Performance Index, which is important to me. Um, and, you know, it's just a fairer way. A much higher percentage of yeah. voters are heard. Yes. So if I can summarize proportionality, see if I got it right. Yep. If 10% if of, the, of the province wants to support the Pink Party, yep. the Pink Party will get 10% of the seats in the legislature. Exactly. Is that, that's the bottom? That's exactly it. Okay. That's exactly it. And Whereas now, it's like if you have a pizza party and you've got 10 people yes. <laughs> and four want meat on their pizza and yes. the others all want different variations. Well, yes. the fact that the four are united around meat, then everybody's going to eat meat. <laughs> do you think that is partly responsible for the dissolution that some people have with politics? Yes, I do. Because I think people just feel it doesn't matter, you know, and you, yeah. you cast your vote, but the likelihood of it really yes. having any effect, people get cynical, they try strategic voting, yes. and that makes people, people don't want to vote yeah. strategically. So let me go straight to the big complaint that people say about these systems. They say they're really complicated, number one, and number two, tiny minority parties, which could be extremists on the left or the right, get disproportionate power. And they, they say, well, look at Israel or look at Italy. Yeah. What's your response to that? Well, I think, first of all, there's some truth. There are some countries, you know, out of all the 90 that are using proportional voting that are not functioning quite as well, just as there are yes. on the first past the post. True. 
Um, but I think the, um, just to address though, first your, your first point was complicated. Yes. And on that, the ballot, I've looked at all the ballots, they're simple. Yes. I mean, I rate and rank things all the time when pollsters call me. We, yeah, That's we, not the issue. Right. Counting the ballots sometimes can be a little more complicated, yeah. but I don't have to count them. You don't have that's, to count that's them. That's right. Like, we have experts to do that, and I think the no side historically has used that in a fear-mongering way. So yeah. that's number one. Yes. We don't have to count. <laughs> right. We have to understand the basic principles, but we're not in charge of the counting. And then in terms of the fringe parties, I mean, I think you look at the fact right now in, um, in BC, 10 to 15 percent of our voters vote, would like to vote for the Conservative Party. Yes. Does the Conservative Party have a seat? I mean, the yeah. likes of Bill Thielman would say anything right of center is extremist. Yeah. So. I believe the conservative, people yes. who voted conservative, should have a voice, just like the same for... So, should there be a threshold when a party that gets like 1% of the vote, should they get 1% of the seats or 2% or what should the threshold be for yeah. a party to be accepted? Yeah. Normally the way it works, it depends on what for form of proportionality you're using. If you've got a regional model, there's kind of a built-in threshold. Okay. But 4 to 5% is right. usually what it turns out to yes. be. So, you know, and, and also, I think my attitude is I'd rather have, if, there, if there's 5% of the population yes. that has an extreme point of view, I want them in the legislature yeah. to contain them, to have the dialogue. Except that, if one, if, than, except that if one party's got 40, the other one's got 40, and the extremists have got one, they can get yeah. disproportionate power for their extremist yeah. agenda. Yeah. But e even so, I mean, if it's, if it's part of the reality, it's better to not completely ostracize. Right. I, I look at the U.S. Yes. I mean, Trump took over. He's yes. a fringe group. He took over the, the Republican Party. He took over a yeah. mainstream party. I, and I, that's the danger. I mean, yeah. when people go on about fringe groups, I, I, are, and that's first yeah. past the post. Well, I see America, frankly, as a completely failed democracy. Yeah. And it's to our credit in British Columbia that we've now eliminated money from yes, politics. I agree. Where, which, I mean, most senators and congressmen are millionaires. Yeah. And that's been, thanks to the current NDP yeah. Green Party Alliance, the biggest donation any of us can make is like 1,200 or something like that. 1,200 is the limit. So that's fantastic. I agree. So it's let's get to the nub of this. What are the main alternatives that we need to learn about? Well, just before we get to okay. that, because actually uh, Fair Vote Canada BC has slightly shifted its position on that, because our analysis has shown that in the past, the thing that has killed it for the average voter, and where, why the, the accusation yes. of complicated is, when you get into the weeds of how you count all these votes, yes. the ordinary voter says, uh-uh, tuning out. Yeah. So um, what we think is important right now is for the ballot to pose a mandate question. Do you believe we should modernize our voting system so that the legislature reflects the popular vote in general? And then you, in the preamble to that question, and you say yes, yes or no, and then in the preamble to that question you say, and a, by a proportional voting system we mean a system that guarantees local representation, maintains a regional balance, no seats going from the interior to Vancouver. <laughs> yes. Every MLA is elected, you know, not no closed lists where people are just parachuted right. in, and, you know, where every voter, every vote matters. So if you put in some criteria like that, along with a process, yes. and we would recommend um, a process that would be under the umbrella of Elections BC, neutral, yes, not party driven, with a citizen's jury, so that's an expedited citizen's jury process that would then design after, after the populace has said, yep, we agree in principle, we want to move to proportionality and yes. here's, here are the main criteria, let this body under EBC go off and fine tune it. There's lots of different so options. would your citizen's jury be similar to the citizen's assembly that we had 10 years ago? No. 
because we've done all that work. Yes. There's been 15 commissions. We don't, you know, that's why we are... Well, to be emphasis. fair, I mean, we need to get on the record. When the Citizens' Assembly did their recommendation and they recommended single transferable vote, they did. the people of British Columbia voted by 57, 58 percent. They did. Yes, to we do it. We would have won it. We would have won. We would have won it. In any normal we democracy, did we but did anyway. win, yes. Because sometimes people say, oh, it's been defeated twice. It has not. Yes. And I always challenge that. Right. But anyway... Um, yeah, so an expedited process, all the evidence, all the research has been done, um, and it's just a question of using sort of two broad approaches to proportionality, one being where you group ridings into multi-member ridings. So right. you have a number of candidates representing, you know, most likely in an urban area. So that's one approach, and there's variations yes. on that. Or secondly, you expand the size of a riding and voters get to vote on their local MLA and they get to vote on a regional right. MLA. And so you have a top-up top up component. And that's basically the two main approaches and you then can have hybrids and yeah. systems that so reflect. I understood that in, say, Germany where they have this mixed member proportional right. system, they do have a local MP or member of yep. the Bundestag, then in addition they have a party list right. and the top up comes from the party list. Right. So the people on the party list are not elected directly and that's how you get more women elected, more minorities and stuff like that. Yeah. Because, so you're saying no to a party list personally? No closed list. So in other words, everybody who is put forward would have to have been nominated in a truly democratic way. Nominated by... By their their usual, you know, but the, mem but the members processes. of the party. Yes. Right, yes. But then the voters get to choose. They don't they're not presented with here's our list. Okay. They actually get to choose. So oh, I see. So so don't want to get too complicated and yet we have to handle it. So let's assume we're going to elect one person directly. Yep. And that's by first past the post. Yep. And if that normally gives you a bad result because you're not being balanced, you then top it up from this wider pool. Right. But the, in the pool, say the pink party might have six candidates and people are voting for the one they prefer. Is yes. that right? Yes. Okay, so you're still choosing the candidate from the top up pool. Yeah, and you, you're going by party. That's the yes, mixed obviously, member yes. approach. But within, if, if someone says, well, I want a, a liberal candidate, for my backfire top-up vote, do they have right. several Liberal candidates to choose from then? Yes, that's, oh, that right. would be with an open list because okay. Ontario's referendum in 2007, they had a closed list proposed and it was defeated. So our Fair Vote Canada BC is recommending no closed list because people just feel that that's going to be manipulated. Right. There's a lot of cynicism about hmm. politicians. So, you know, if, yes. if we go to the, that model of lists, that they need to be democratically nominated and then an open an open process so that people so that those MLAs right. are actually elected. And so then and is that's it just one approach. Yes. But you know, Guy, I just think it is so crucial to keep hammering on um, getting approval in principle from the people to go the route yes. of proportionality and letting all the mechanics it's like when I buy a car, I don't I personally don't lift up the hood and yeah. say, you know, how is yes. this connected to that? I want to know, is it safe? Is it reliable? Yes. Uh, does, does it, is it econo you know, economically yeah. and environmentally? Does it work? <laughs> does is it, it popular? Yes. Like, how many people around the world are driving this car? Yes. And what does consumer reports yeah. say? Same thing with PR. Right. Is it reliable? Is it safe? Right. How many countries are using it? You know, what will be the outcome? So some of the opponents who want to stay, stay with first past the post yeah. are saying it gives us a stable majority government and that's good for us. Whereas they say, well, proportional voting will give you a minority government or a coalition government. Mm -hmm. And is that good or bad? Good. I mean, look at our current situation right now in B.C. I mean, I'm very encouraged. Yes. Very encouraged. Well, we're still in the early days of it. It could all yeah. fall apart, right? Sure. You but, know, but, but I think that it, that's maturity. Yes. I mean, it's like kindergarten, where only, you know, the biggest and the, you know, gets to have the whole yes. cake. Like, surely we're adults now and can, can deal with a more consensual right. shared power model. And I think women in particular, it's no accident. A lot of women are supportive of PR precisely. I mean, I've sat in the legislature. Yes. And I am disgusted by, by what I see and hear. It's like big, you know, 
bullying, cat calls. I mean, it's. Yeah. I wouldn't take my kids there if he paid me. So. Now, is that true in the legislature with the new current government? I haven't actually been there. I was okay. only there at the very beginning. Right. So I think it's better. Yeah. But even so, I think. Because my understanding in the old system, one party's governing, the other's in opposition. So right. throw mud at each other, shout exactly. whatever. But if, you, but if you know that you may need to work with that party, exactly. it means you're going, does, that, does it? Exactly. So in theory, it means you're more polite and respectful. When we look at Europe, yeah. does it pan out that way? Do it, are the parties more respectful of each other, do you think? I think there's a built-in motive and incentive yes. for parties because they realize they're going to need support from more than just their established traditional base. Yes. So there's a built-in motive you know, for them to, to be reasonable. And that's what we're trying to correct, to, to have a balanced representation yes. so that every voter has somebody who stands for their values so as much as possible. So what about the other system people talk about, the single transferable vote, yep. which is sometimes done in, well, presidents all around the world. You know, you've got four candidates and the bottom one drops off. This, and, well, the party leaders themselves, leadership yeah. campaigns are on that way. Yeah, that's preferential voting. So, yeah, preferential yeah. voting. Is that yeah. the same as single transferable vote? No. Okay, my brain's now getting... Uh, well, this is it. <laughs> and that's why we don't want to go there. I mean, okay. nerds, nerds love this stuff. So is, does preferential voting work in a provincial election setup? Yeah, it does. And I mean, in Ireland, and there's many different countries that, yes. that have used it. Um, but it's, um, it, it relies on a, a multi-member riding. Okay. And so you get to vote. You get to vote for several candidates, and you rank order them. Okay. Um, the counting is a little more complex, yeah. but it gives the, I would say the benefit of STV is it gives vo voters maximum choice. Okay. Um, and then we have come up with a hybrid called local PR that, in addition to that, guarantees that there will be a local MLA for every riding, not necessarily of the party of your choice, but that at least there will be a local person in your and riding. And would that be a similar to the, in size to the riding that we have in terms of local, or instead of Victoria Beacon Hill, would it be Victoria as a whole? Right, exactly. Okay. I mean, under both systems, you're going to see larger ridings, although right. b basically still the same number of MLAs. We're not in favor of some big yes. increase in the number of But MLAs. does that mean that I might have two or three people representing me. Exactly. And that's the advantage of So it. I can choose which one exactly. I have a good relationship with. Exactly. Or issue. Yes. If, you know, if one person you know is really strong on housing or child care that's and that the matters, one you, you, you go. That make, yes. So it gives you the voters more choice and yes. more access points. Yeah. You know? So in terms of the, the general public in BC with a, a, a vote of some kind coming yeah. up, first of all, when do you think that vote might be? Well, they have said that it has to happen by the end of November. We don't want it to happen over the municipal elections, because then you're, that's... Distracting yeah. the issues, okay. Um, so that knocks out that. It could happen in May and June if it was simply well. a mandate-only question. Yes. To get the a vote in principle, let's go this direction, and then get the, the work, right. detailed work. So, I mean, I, we would support that. So then the mandate, that, that simple question would be either keep it the way it is, or change to a system that, re that reflects the variety of our population exactly. and proportional. And with these criteria, yes. preserve local representation. No, no regional, no change, no regional yes. imbalance. Every MLA elected, because those are the hot buttons, you know. And the, right. the no side has been yes. really spreading a lot of misinformation. So, do the three main, well, the four main political parties have a, a pre-arranged position? Are they? Is it clear what they're all thinking on this? The no side, it is very clear that they, all the leadership contenders of the BC Liberals are totally united that their number one priority is to defeat PR. Wow. So, they so want, that tells you something. They want to stick with the system that's fundamentally unfair. Exactly. Because it is conducive to <laughs> having vested interests being well taken care of. But it, so it, uh, to me, that's, yes. that's, a sign, that's a sign right there. Like we've dealt with the issue of getting big money out of um, election finance. Now it's a yes. question of getting big money out of a rigged voting system that basically is broken and is not so working. So if, if we have election financing that no one can give more than, say, $1,200 right. to a member, how would First Past the Post still be rigged financially? Wouldn't it be fair? How could big money play a role if you can't give 
donations even under the well, old system? Well, because, um, because first past the post allows one party with, let's say, 39% of the popular yes. vote to have 100% of the power. And all the other people don't get a voice. I mean, I remember interviewing okay. uh, John Horgan last March. Yes. And, um, you know, he told us, he said, initially I was like, ah, oh, PR. Yes. He said, after having sat in the legislature all these years, yes. I realized we, it is essential. So, Terry, uh, if we had a change to a proportional yeah. system, is it not true that you could equally well have a coalition government of the Conservatives and the Liberals governing together? Yes. So why would they be so strongly opposed to changing? Well, right now, um, uh, you know, they, uh, they obviously don't think that that would happen. Um, and I think the reason is, too, that the uh, Liberal Party right now is a big tent party. Yes. It has conservatives inside it. Yes. Um, federal, federal conservatives. And so I don't think they wish to see a defection of federal conservatives into their own party. That's probably why, into, right. you know... Right, they're the from their party to yes, the Conservatives. Yes, exactly. And so what's the NDP position? NDP position uh, we're very happy with. It is that they're, they, they're going to campaign in favour and they're just starting to do that. OK. A uh, press release came out today and inviting all their members to sign up, to volunteer, to donate, to get behind it. We've been meeting with all their MLAs, so they're, so they they're are going to be supporting... Um, uh, PR and consulting in with principle their, yes, yes in principle and then they the Attorney General's office will be coming out probably sometime in March okay. with conclusions after their consultation right. about what the question will be yes based on everything they've heard and uh, when it will be yes and, and, and financing and what's the Green Party's position Green Party's position is, uh, you know, they're all, everybody's in the same boat right now. Everybody's going to be, okay. the NDP party will submit to the Attorney General's Office a position. Yes. So will the Greens. So I can't speak for them. Okay. But I do know that the joint working group, the NDP Green working group, has been working beautifully together. Okay. We actually met with them as a whole group yes. and were impressed. Yes. Um, you know, by their cordial spirit. And, and so fairvote.ca, the BC chapter, yep. is a non-profit? What, it, what is it exactly? Okay. Um, we're a great group. <laughs> we are, first of all, we're um, 10,000 members. Whoa. In, yeah, That's in, in Canada or in BC? BC. Just in BC. Just in BC. So we're our own entity. That's very we're big. We're not, you know. Yes. We have a 20-member steering committee made up of the 15 chapters. So we're, we have Prince George, Terrace, Kamloops, Kelowna, okay. Vancouver. We're all over. Yes. 99% um, volunteer driven. Right. We have one full-time staff member. Wow. And that can be a problem, but on the yes. other hand, it keeps us honest and keeps us rooted yes. in our community. So we've been busy. We've been meeting with every MLA, all the party officials. Yes. We're canvassing. Yes. We're out there getting um, vote pledges from the, the people right. to a, a mandate, a principle yes. of supporting PR. And um, we're holding town halls. So we're doing so. We have 70 okay. volunteer writers, Guy. There's a writers, writers group, okay. 70 writers, wow. who every day they get the highlights from the mainstream media and are told priority. So, so we'll put the website, fairvote.ca slash PR4BC, up, up on the screen. That'd be great. If people want to get involved, how can they contribute? Um, we need canvassers, we need writers, we need social media people, we need data entry people, we need chapter leaders. Anybody you'd like to get a chapter up and running, we'd right. love to hear from you. Um, and with, could, can people join an existing chapter? Oh, absolutely. And what, are the, what happens if they phone up and they say yes? We will welcome them with open arms. Right. The chapters all meet regularly and they're each rooted in their local right. community. And, you know, so it's... Uh, and we're hiring... A, the second staff person that we will now have right. is going to be an organizer in Vancouver. Right. Because Vancouver is like almost half the voters, so right. we really need... And so are you targeting them. either knocking on doors or phoning as many people as possible? Yep. And getting into d the different ethnic communities will be really important. Right. The temples, etc. Yes. How are you financing all this? We, <laughs> we have very little money, but we did manage to raise $38,000 by tapping into the okay. national list. So this is why it's all volunteers, right? Exactly. Yes. I mean, we, it's quite 
amazing yes. how we're doing it. I mean, everybody else, all of our other allies are yes. rich compared to us. But on the other hand, we are a genuine, right. and we, we represent all political yeah. persuasions. We have federal liberals, we have a few conservatives, well, we have Greens, right. we have NDPers, we have people who are just not involved at all. Yeah. So, you know, it's, we're, we're BC. We and is it, when people BC. meet in the chapter, is it a, is it a sit down and work hard, or is it a fun party spirit thing? You know, Victoria meets in a pub. There you go. Well, we so we, we get a drink, we get a meal, Great. and then we go to work. And so any chapter can choose where it meets. Yeah. Well, look, Terry, this is, thank you for your leadership on Great. this issue to help. Well, thank you. Changing the voting system can have huge implications, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So um, my name's Guy Dauncey. This has been the show you're watching called Change the World. If you like the kind of tenor of creative thinking we're doing, tune in next week for more exciting guests like this. And if you'd like to be on the show, we'll put up the show, or well, my personal email I'll put up, guydauncey at earthfuture. Dot com. Get in touch with me. Or if you have people you'd like to suggest as guests who'd like to be on the show, get in touch. And meanwhile, thanks for watching. <laughs>